Hi, everyone. Good morning and welcome to 52 Weeks of Leadership. If this is your first time joining us, uh, my name is Molly Anderson. I'm the Executive Director of UB Center for Leadership and Organizational Effectiveness. And we're a group of faculty scholars and experts that work together to create better leaders. And one of the ways we do that is through this series, but we also offer a number of other programs as well as an annual conference. And so I'm gonna throw some information up in the chat today about our conference on June 3rd on the future of leadership, changing the way we live and work featuring Daniel Pink. So look forward to having you all join us at that conference on June 3rd. So now the reason we're all here is to hear Dr. Aisha O'Malley. Uh, she is a faculty member in our organization of human resources in the School of Management at the University of Buffalo. And she's gonna be talking about leading with empathy. Uh, her research interests include communication, healthcare and business. And her specialty in teaching is around communication, literacy, and business. Um, she is a big part of what we do in our center. She's part of our leadership coaching program, and I can't wait for her to get started. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Aisha O'Malley. Hello, hello. Thank you, Molly, so much. And thanks for everybody for joining us this afternoon. I don't know where everybody is, but Buffalo right now, we have sunshine, the snow has melted, and I'm feeling wonderful because spring is here. So, um, okay, so let me get my, my uh, share my screen for you guys. Molly, you wanna let me know if you can see that? Okay, perfect. Okay. So, Thanks. So let's just jump right in, right? And so we know that we're all here to talk a little bit more about empathy and leadership and how, you know, we can fuse the two to make better or develop better leaders for uh, the future. So um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm Dr. O'Malley, Aisha O'Malley. I'm a clinical assistant professor of School of Management within the Organizational Behavior and Human Resources Department. I also am a Chloe trainer and a leadership coach. I also do motivational speaking um, and things of that nature. I'm also a social activist. So these things have um, is the result of what I've been through in my journey. And so my journey started, um, you know, like everybody else's journey, you go to high school, you go to college. And during college, um, I became very ill. And that illness led to um, me needing a heart transplant at the age of 24. And so I was put on the national transplant list for a heart. And um, I waited about eight to nine months, I think, total. And then I was able to have a new heart um, in, uh, transplanted into me uh, starting February 9th, 2004. So this February, I just celebrated 17 years uh, with my heart. And so that journey within healthcare is what really started me on this empathy, this idea of empathy. And so um, I know many of you are patients out there um, and you may have chronic illness and chronic illness is what really drove me to dig deeper into, uh, into empathy. Because as I'm working with these physicians, uh, surgeons and doctors, what I realized is that within healthcare, there's, there's not a lot of care within healthcare, right? And what I saw and what I thought was lacking was some empathy. And so I started to build this idea and, and research this. And so that's how I came to this idea of leadership and empathy and leading with empathy. Um, because I see the world changing. I see that in today's world, we need more support. Everybody needs more support. We need more positive energy. We need more um, enthusiasm and excitement for life. This translates into our emotions and our feelings, which we bring to work on a daily basis, right? And as much as we may fight that emotions are not uh, a place, uh, don't have a place in the workplace, unfortunately, if you have humans in the workplace, you have emotions. And it's in it, and it, and whether that's you want to, whether you want to um, re recognize it or not, the emotions are there. And so, how do we manage this so that our employees feel satisfied, feel uh, fulfilled in their positions, and are productive and can build companies? Right. We have to look at the leadership. So let's dive in. So. 
Daniel Goleman, right? He is a author, New York Times bestselling author and a psychologist. He says that empathetic people are superb at recognizing and meeting the needs of um, their clients, customers, or subordinates. They seem approachable, wanting to hear what people have to say, right? And so they listen carefully, picking up on what uh, people are truly concerned about and respond on that mark, right? So there's a lot in that quote, and we're gonna to touch on pretty much the whole thing, right? Throughout this um, presentation. But I, what, what I want you to understand is that um, empathy is something positive. Empathy is something that you can develop and empathy is just another way to support people and build positivity in the work environment. So, when we look at some statistics, right, in the workplace right now, we have three different generations. We have the millennials, we have the Gen X, which is me, the best generation, right? Anyways, uh, Generation X, and we have the boomers. All of these are within the workplace currently. And they would consider leaving their current employer if the company became less empathetic. These percentages are high. Now, if we think about the millennials, this is our future, right? Future leadership here. And that they're at 78%. They are almost saying they expect empathy in the workplace, okay? Generation X, we desire it as well, right? And there is a certain level of expectation, but we, we also know about the work life, workplace setting that our parents came from, the boomers, right? And so we know that there's this idea of, all right, there's certain emotions that are okay and other emotions that are not. How do we manage this, right? So let's talk about that. Actually, let me take it a step, step back. So um, what I want you to understand is, let me do this. I didn't really go into the benefits of empathy. I apologize, right? So the benefits. Why should one be empathetic in the workplace? So as I was saying earlier, empathy is an essential aspect of the 21st century um, leadership. And we can't ignore it anymore. When we look at these statistics, it is an expectation for, work, for the work environment. And so if we wanna prevent continued ethical disasters, if we want to minimize poor leadership, and have a more humane working environment so employees' needs are met and they are thriving at work. When they thrive, the company thrives, productivity increases, right? Bottom line increases. And so when these things happen, people are, are happy. And so the benefits is empathy is positive related to job performance, right? So research shows that managers who practice empathetic leadership um, toward direct reports are viewed as better performers, all right? And so that's one benefit. Empathy generates an interest and appreciation for others, paving the way to more productive working relationships. When we think about the workplace, when we think about business, no matter what type of business you're in, it's all based on relationship. If you can't build a solid relationship and maintain that relationship, then your business suffers right? Managers improve their leadership effectiveness and increases chances of success in job, right? So managers are also happier. Showing empathy towards employees can provide them with the support they require. What did I say earlier? Support is what we are looking for. So provides them the support that they require and be able to deal with the challenges or issues not, that they might be facing and, and pushing them to achieve their goals. So understand that everybody that's in the workplace has career goals, they have goals. And if they're not meeting those goals, they're not happy, they're not productive, right? And, and, and slow producti productivity means slow uh, bottom line. So uh, lastly, empathetic leaders can build a sense of trust and, and, and strengthen relationships they have with their employees and consequently the relationships employees have with one another leading to a greater collaboration and improved productivity. So if the leadership is empathetic, it trickles down and it creates a more empathetic work environment where most people are happy and feel fulfilled and their job is getting done. 
So when I think about this, I also am a, a case investigator for New York State for COVID, right? And I'm on a team and I have a supervisor. Her name is Tanya. And I love Tanya. Tanya is an example of an empathetic leader because what Tanya does is she shows that she cares about us by, um, you know, recognizing us. And she also, you know, she'll send us little $10 cards for anything that we've improved on, right? Um, and because of her leadership and being empathetic as a team, we are empathetic to each other. So anytime someone has a baby, if someone is sick, there's always a collection going so that we could give to that person because we want that person to what? Feel supported and feel good. And so those are the little things she does. And honestly, anything that Tanya asks us to do, we do. And I'm gonna tell you, she went as far as she got a promotion and she said she wouldn't take the promotion unless her whole team got promoted. And we got promoted as a team and we work as one. And so that's just a real life um, example of empathetic leadership. But also I wanna talk about Dan Price. So I know many of you probably have heard of Dan Price. He is deemed as um, one of the empathetic leaders, uh, I'd say with, within 2020 and 2021, right? Um, especially in 2020 and even uh, 2019, because that's when it started with him. And so, you know, Dan Price is co-founder and CEO of Gravity Payments. And in 2019, he took a pay cut. So he was making $1 million a year to $70,000 per year for five years. Oh, actually he did that five years ago, right? And so what he did is by taking that pay cut, he raised every employee to making $70,000 a year, no matter what the position was, right? He gave up his stock options as well, right? So what he did was he pulled his employees up with him, right? Now, if we fast forward to the pandemic, Dan Price is uh, also having some struggles with his business closing because everybody was struggling during COVID, right? By mid-March, his revenue fell by 55%. In four to five months, he, had ex he would have um, had to close down his, uh, his company. And so other competitors, they ended up firing half of their staff and that's how they stayed open. Dan brought it to his employees and said, how can we keep the doors open? He took a pay cut, CEOs took a pay cut in 2020, employees volunteered to take a pay cut. They volunteered to take a pay cut of average 20%. And ultimately, every month after April, they outperformed um, from 2019. No layoffs and no recruitment needed. This is an ideal empathetic situation, right? He is, look him up, he's, he's pretty innovative, right? And um, uh, a, a pretty decent kind of guy to learn about. And so Dan Price is definitely someone in, act, in action who we can look at as an empathetic leader. So empathy. Nothing to be feared of, right? So let's dive in. Now, what is empathy? In its simplest form, empathy is the ability to recognize emotion in others, right? And to understand other people's perspective on a situation. So you can relate to people, right? So that's at the simplest form. Now, if we dig a little bit deeper, right? And we look at empathy in its most developed form, it enables you to use the insight to improve someone else's mood and to support them through challenging situation. Now think about yourself and if you are a leader, if you're a manager, CEO, whatever it is, you're in a situation where you have an employee who's a top performing employee, but something is going on and he or she is not performing well. How do you fix that? You find out and you sit down and you talk to this person, right? You get to know this person. And when you get to know people, then you're able to realize how you might be able to support that person. So let's look at the types of empathy. There are three types of empathy that I want to focus on here, right? There's cognitive empathy, which is what we sometimes find in healthcare and workplace settings. It's, it's, it's just really thinking. It's just, okay, I can, I can see your situation, right? No emotion is involved in this type of empathy. Then we have affective empathy. Empathy here is more feeling. 
This is more heart related, right? You can feel where this person is coming from. Then we have compassionate empathy. Compassionate empathy is where we want to be. So let's go, let's go a little bit deeper. Cognitive empathy, right? When we think about cognitive empathy, it's also known as perspective taking. And it's the ability to understand what another person might be thinking. And so it need not involve any emotional engagement by the observer. So cognitive empathy, you're almost caring from a distance, right? You're like this, you stay there and I can understand where you're coming from, right? Now, this is easy to do. So providing cognitive empathy is easy to do, especially if you know someone, right? If you know this person, you're similar, they might be family members, you've worked with this person for over 10 years, you have a good idea who this person is. So we tend to defend those people even if they're wrong. So if we have a conversation with someone that we know and we might disagree with, we generally are predisposed to give them the benefit of the doubt, right? And that's because we know them and we understand where they're coming from. And so we may say, you know what? I know this person, he's ultimately a good person. So I'm not gonna really take this any further. I'll give him some grace, right? Is what you say, right? I don't agree with you, but I'll give you grace. That's easy. Where it becomes difficult, is when you apply that empathy to someone you don't know. Now think about that. It is difficult for people to have empathy for those whom they don't identify with, right? So there's no baseline of knowing this person at all. Now, that person may seem foreign or perceived as a threat. So what happens is, when you feel like you're having a conversation with someone and you disagree and this person you don't know very well, you may feel threatened. And if you feel threatened, what do we do? We automatically start to defend. We get in defense mode. We put up our walls. And so any room for empathy there is lost, right? And so cognitive empathy is why it's difficult for people to say, you know what? We can agree to disagree, right? With people who do they don't know. Okay, so simply knowing how the other person feels and what they might be thinking is cognitive empathy. Now, let's go dig a little bit deeper into emotional empathy. Now, emotional empathy, right, also known as affective empathy or primitive empathy, is what we're most familiar with, right? It's the ability to share the feelings of another person. And so you understand that person on a deeper level, right? Now, when we think about that, it is closely connected. Emotional empathy is closely connected to emotional contagion. And so what that means is having one person's emotions or behavior mimicked in another person's emotion or behavior. So if I smile, you might want to smile as well, right? Or if I'm feeling sad, you might frown your face and be concerned because you're like, oh, he's sad. I wonder why he or she is sad, right? So that's a contagious type of thing. Um, so when we think about emotional contagion and empathy, we engage in emotional empathy constantly. This is just something that we do. So this is already something that happens among us in the workplace, right? In every company, every team has a personality. So some are known to be fun and happy and, and, um, and you know, joke around during their task oriented day, or others might be a little more serious, right? And if we look at the leader in the group, we might see where that, pers that, that personality comes from, right? So just as much as positive emotion can be a contagion, so can negative emotion. So if we have a leader that is, um, has, uh, um, that's not empathetic, right? Our team members will be less empathetic, okay? So, it's so, because it's so closely tied, emotional empathy and emotional contagion, we surround ourselves with these emotions all day long, right? And so it impacts how we work throughout the day. So just keep that in mind. When you feel physically along with the other person as though their emotions were contagious, that's emotional empathy. Now, we're gonna talk about compassionate empathy. This is the ideal empathy. And so compassionate empathy is what we usually understand 
by empathy, feeling someone's pain. And but the difference is you're taking that step further and you're saying, I want to help this person. OK, that's compassionate empathy. It honors the natural connection by considering both the felt senses. So the feeling, the heart feelings and the intellectual situation of another person without losing your center. So meaning while your emotion might be contagious, you still have a you are still grounded and you're able to make good decisions now. If we look at, as a general rule, people who want or need empathy don't just need you to understand cognitively, right? Okay, I can understand you. Um, and they certainly don't need you to start crying and feeling over, you know, over empathetic for them to the point where they, you know, they're over emotional, right? They don't want that. They don't want to be crying and, you, and they see you crying. There's no help or support in that, right? And then ultimately what they want is for you instead to understand and empathize with what they are going through and crucially either take or help them take actions to resolve the problem. And that is compassionate empathy, okay? And so what Daniel Goldman says is with this kind of empathy, we not only understand a person's predicament, we feel them, but are spontaneously moved to help them if needed. All right. So now we got to find this balance, right? Okay. So we have the cognitive, we have the emotional, and then we have the compassionate, right? So be mindful that cognitive empathy may work in certain situations and it, it, and it fits well. Just be mindful that it involves insufficient feeling. It may be perceived as unsympathetic as a unsympathetic response by those that are upset or, or distressed, okay? Now, emotional empathy, the feelings can be very strong, especially by the distress. Now, if you are very emotional and upset, you end up going back to, that takes you back to childhood, right? This is psychological part of it. And if you're overwhelmed and you're overly upset, you cannot make good decisions, right? You don't really know how to cope in that state. And so um, it's very hard to help anyone else if you're overcome by your own emotion. So we go back to the idea of compassionate empathy. When you can feel another's pain as if it's happening to you and therefore express the appropriate amount of empathy, but also at the same time, when you can remain in control of your emotions and apply reason to the situation. So you're still, while you're, you feel for what this person is going through, you're still able to say, okay, now, what can I do to help this person? Because they need to move through this, right? In order to be more productive and, and move on with their day. So this means that when you keep those cognitive and empathy in that place, you stay centered and grounded and you're better able to provide appropriate support to someone that might be in distress, okay? So when we're practicing compassionate empathy, we're having a fine balance between logic and emotion, okay? Now, where do we start? Right. And so, um, Peter, if you can throw up that link. So we kind of have to assess what kind of empathy do we apply to different situations. And so um, Peter will throw in the chat a link to it's just a basic, free, simple, psychological empathy quiz. Right. And it gives you a, a, a range, puts you in a range and it tells you what that range means. Right. With that score. So. One thing you can do is you can get a leadership coach, right? A leadership coach is someone who is there to help you develop yourself as a leader. If you're trying to build emotional intelligence and empathy, this person can help you and hold you accountable and give you some tools necessary to practice this skill, right? But what we can take is a step further. Let's start to practice this stuff. 
you can be open and transparent, right? With your communication. When you are open and transparent, you're coming from more of a learner mindset. And so you generally are interested in learning about another person, right? When you show that genuine interest in learning about someone else, they feel, in a sense, they feel, oh, this person wants to know more about me. They want to open up to you. They want to share some ideas with you, right? Okay. And so be open-minded to different perspectives that are different from your own, right? And so understand that there are multiple people from so many different backgrounds that you learn when you start to open yourself up and develop relationships and become more empathetic. You really learn more about the world as you learn more about people, okay? Be a good listener. Practice active listening to those around you. One way to do this is by paying more attention to both the verbal and nonverbal. A lot of times we're just focusing on one or the other, right? But pay attention to both, right? Are they matching up? Are there nonverbals and what they're saying matching up? If not, there may be an issue there that you might dig into to solve a problem, okay? This will also allow you to focus from the story that's in your mind to actually what's happening, okay? Leave from within. Sorry, I'm not keeping up with my slides. I'm so, all right, there we go. Leave from within, right? And so understand your role as a leader, okay? And when you lead, yes, you can be in the front and lead the tribe, but you can also be in the tribe and lead from within, meaning promote good communication, promote collaboration, promote genuine interest in each other. When you do that, then you start opening up to showing and providing examples of empathy. And then the people that work under you or around you will start to pay attention. And you might see some behavior shifts and behavior change, okay? Also, I said this before, but really have genuine interest in people right? Always take a personal interest in the duties of each and every individual on your team. This will help you understand where each person is coming from and what influences their behavior. And this will also allow you to know what type of support they may need from you, okay? So showing genuine interest, you will learn a lot about your team or the people that you're working with. Be deliberative, right? About being empathetic. Be intentional about practicing to be more empathetic, right? Um, you have to practice in order for this stuff to stick, right? And so we know this about anything. You want to be a good football player, you got to practice. You want to be a good flautist, you got to practice your flute, right? And so the more you practice it, the better you get at it, the more natural it becomes, and then you just do it. And then you know, I'm an empathetic leader, right? Be patient with yourself, all right? Learning anything new is going to be a challenge, right? It's going to be tough in the beginning, but the more you practice, again, the better you get at it, right? So this will, it won't happen overnight, becoming an empathetic leader, but again, baby steps. Get to know the people around you. Um, being empathetic requires time. So just give yourself some space and some time to really practice this stuff. And don't force it, right? Um, don't fake empathy. You know, if you put yourself and your and 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 your uh, and you think about some of the encounters that you've had, you know when people are faking it. You know when people really just don't care and they're just doing it to do it, right? That's not empathy, right? That's faking it. And so don't fake it. Be genuinely interested in trying to make each person on your team better. Your goal as a leader is to uplift people. It's not about you. And that's what we kind of have to understand with leadership. It's not just about you, I'll say that. It's not just about you. You have been chosen to lead, right? And so people look up to you. You influence people. Use your power for good, right? Use that empathetic power for good. Raise people up. Raise their awareness, their emotional intelligence, their empathy, their empathy, and you'll find.
find that you will surround yourself with people that are caring, people that are supportive naturally, and, and you generally feel better and you feel good as a leader, right? So finally, when you use empathy and leadership, there's a few things that happen. You gain a greater awareness of the needs of your employees. This is so key in the business world right now. I mean, employees are struggling, right? Mentally, physically, COVID has taken an impact. Social justice movements are taking an impact. You are not dealing with people who are just going home, taking care of their family and coming back. They are going home, they are, taking care of a family that's in their household, away from their household. They may be dealing with a parent that has COVID that's in the hospital by themselves. They may be dealing with COVID themselves and having to manage a household, running a household with COVID, right? You might encounter people who are just unhappy and, and you can't say, oh, well, that's not my business. Oh, but it is, they work for you, right? And at a certain level, it is. And leadership is about responsibility. It is your responsibility to support and care for your employees. And so empathy allows you to create an environment of open communication and more effective feedback. Now think about this. Now that you've developed, once you've practiced your empathy and you developed better trusting relationships with your employees, they are more likely to listen to your feedback and not take it personally and not get and not feel disgruntled about it right why because you've developed a trusting relationship with them and they know that you're talking to them and providing this feedback because you care and you want to see them do well all right and if your employees do well understand you look amazing as a leader okay so again it's not just about you Empathy also allows you to understand and explore problems facing employees and how to help them resolve it, right? Now, imagine if you use, you have this superpower, this empathy, right? And you're, and you're using it for good and you encounter one of your employees that's one of the best employees that you have and they're struggling and you're just, what is going on with Joe or Jason or Helen? What is really happening? You sit down and you have a conversation with this person. And they open up to you and they tell you they are being vulnerable with their boss, with their leader. You think you can say, well, okay, so you stay there. I can, I can relate, I guess, right? That's not, that's no longer okay, right? And so you have to listen actively, understand who they are so that you can support them so that that person, your top one, isn't being miserable day by day by day. And the performance is going and, and, and decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. What you want to do is turn that around. You do that with empathy. And lastly, being empathetic with your employees helps to validate what they're going through. We've all, we all know we've all had hard times, especially in this past year. So we can relate more than we even know. Allow yourself to relate. Allow yourself to get to know people on a deeper level because emotions are there whether you like it or not. And if you're able to, and it's like a teacher. I'm a, I'm a professor. Every year I have different students. I love teaching. I love to see how my students come to me. And then after 15 weeks, how they blossomed. Oh my gosh, it's the best feeling. That's leadership. That is true leadership. When you have employees coming back to you, you know, it was because of you why I'm this successful. That is an amazing feeling. So tap into that. And I just want to say, when you develop stronger, more trusting relationships by using empathy, you don't just build an environment around you in the workplace that is supportive you become overall a better person. You become better able to support everybody, right? You become a better spouse, a better mom, a better father. 
right? A better cousin, a better friend, right? Uh, a better mentor, because you're really tapping into people, understanding what they need and how they work and building trusting and lasting relationships. And remember, if we're gonna tie this back into the business world, business is all about relationships. So you build those trusting, lasting, long lasting relationships, you will see a difference in your life. And so I just leave with this quote by Daniel Goleman, another one. I just love, I mean, he's, he's, he's great, right? So empathy doesn't require that we have the exact same, ex oh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong, I'm reading the wrong quote. Uh, Self-absorption, right? Oh, shoot, sorry, oh, Lord, sorry. Going off the rails here, guys. Give me one second, my, my screen. All right, so self-absorption in all its forms kills empathy. So when you only think about self, you are starting to kill relationships and trust, let alone compassion. So when we focus on ourselves, our world contracts as our problems and preoccupation loom large. Because when we contract into our own world, we think it's only us. I'm the only one going through this. Nobody else cares. Nobody else can support me. But that's a lie. Other people have been through what you've been through. Other people understand and do want to support you. But when we focus on others, our world expands. Our own problems drift to the periphery of the mind and so seem smaller. And we increase our capacity for connection or compassionate action, right? So when you connect with someone, when you're able to build a trusting relationship with someone, you are able to support them and provide that compassionate empathy that they so much need. So that was it. Um, I don't know if we take questions or how this works. Sure, Molly. Dr. Amelie, thank you. Uh, thanks for sharing your tremendous energy and expertise on such an important and always timely topic. Uh, we do have time for a couple questions. If you don't mind, we have one from Kanasha. Uh, she asked, as a leader, how do you ensure your team doesn't take advantage of your empathy? That's so, what we need to worry about. So what happens is understand that empathy doesn't mean weakness, one right? Empathy, empathy really is you saying to someone, hey, I can relate to you. I can understand where you are. Let me see how I can help you out. You are not, I think if we focus on the idea of take someone taking advantage of, that will happen, right? Um, don't think of empathy as weakness. Think of it as something that helps you to get to know someone so that you can better support them. Now, if you find that they're coming to you on a regular, right, then maybe once you build that, that, that relationship, you can have a conversation, a real conversation, and be honest with how you're feeling in that situation, right? And that's okay to have because now you've developed that relationship, right? But I think what we tend to do as humans is we tend to think of the negatives that might happen. Don't go into it with that, right? Um, I know this much. My students, I'm empathetic, right? My students know not to play with me. When I, okay, so when I say this is due, this is what'll happen if you don't do it, there were consequences. I also say to my students, at any time, please email me. We can have a set up a Zoom meeting. If you need anything, my door is open always, right? So again, if you think about what was said in the beginning, empathetic people are approachable. So yes, you can approach me and we can have a deep conversation. Absolutely. But understand that there are things, there's boundaries that you set into place for yourself so that you don't take it, so that people don't feel like they can take advantage of you. Does that make sense, Kanasha? Thank you, Dr. O'Malley. We also have a question from Lisa asking, I'm a Gen X and how can we help future leaders be more empathetic? It transcends every generation. Would you incorporate this into team building? Absolutely. So, oh my gosh, it has to be in team building if you think about it, right? If you're starting to, if you get a team, you put them together and you start to 
develop these empathetic skills. So you start to do team um, building exercises where they are trusting each other. They um, are able to open up and, 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 and share ideas with each other, even personal information about each other. When you create a circle like that or an environment like that, your team will then start to feel more connected. So absolutely, it should be part of team building, not just the uh, leadership development. Also, if you are the leader of that team, you show by your actions, you lead through example by your actions of how you treat your team members, right? And so make sure to practice empathy with them as you deal with them. And that will show them, okay, I know how she handled this or, or he handled this. Let me see if I can utilize that same skill set or same behavior to help a colleague of mine, right? So absolutely, it has to be in team building. If you're trying to, to build an environment that from here moving forward is more empathetic, it's got to start with the team and the leadership. Very good question, Lisa, though. That's, 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 I feel very strongly about that, absolutely. Well, well done, Dr. O'Malley, and thanks everyone for joining us. Next week, we have Dr. Rick Steinberg. He's gonna be talking about managing change initiatives, so you don't wanna miss it. And please check out more information about our conference on June 3rd featuring Daniel Pink. Thanks again for everyone supporting 52 Weeks of Leadership. We'll see you next time.